ERP, or more commonly known as Enterprise Resource Planning, is the integrated management of main business processes, often in real and time. Oh, what's that? This isn't what you clicked on this for? Oh, <laughs> I know why you clicked on this. Ever since the infancy of the internet and the dawn of online gaming, people have insisted on using these mediums to um, put their drives together, if you know what I mean. As long as people have been aware that emails, instant messages, online forums, and video games could all get their rocks off, they've engaged in one of the internet's longest standing traditions. Putting their metaphorical floppy disks in each other. This phenomenon has particularly taken off in online video games and MMORPGs where players can not only type their naughtiest thoughts to each other, but use their in-game characters to enhance the interaction, garnishing it with some flexible positioning and in-game emotes. Ask anyone in Goldshire in the American World of Warcraft server Moonguard about it and they can explain it for you in... <coughs> <clears throat> Maybe more detail than you'd like. I mean, there's a reason the players of that community have affectionately given Goldshire a different, more vulgar name. Regardless of the controversy and rules that have been implemented by various gaming developers to stop these kinds of behaviors inside their games, the practice has nonetheless persisted. People just find new and more creative ways to push the boundaries of what is possible in that ever relentless pursuit of bashing butts. So what does ERP stand for and what exactly is it? ERP as an acronym literally stands for erotic roleplay. According to Urban Dictionary, the definition of ERP is as follows. It refers to the typing roleplay done in video games, chat rooms, and forums. It is roleplay with little plot besides the quick sex scene between characters. There is no consequence and no long-term story behind it. The RP is basically RP that is rated X. As used in a sentence, would you like to do an ERP? I'm really in the mood. The concept of people being interested in exploring their sexuality and pushing their limits of what is possible doesn't surprise me at all. Though I'd be lying if I said I wasn't surprised when I found out that it has gone far beyond what I ever thought was possible to achieve. After watching several VR chat videos on YouTube, I began getting more recommended to me. Algorithm can algorithm, am I right? Eventually, it led to me clicking on a video about ERP in VR chat, and I was immediately fascinated. This began my journey down a rabbit hole of videos about ERP and VR chat. So much so that I wanted to do a deep dive of my own into the world of erotic roleplay in VR chat and figure out for myself all the intricacies of this phenomenon and everything it entails. What I found shocked me and blew me away. In the world of VR chat, there are two separate yet equally important groups of people, those who engage in erotic roleplay and those who do not. These are their stories. I've been on VR chat for about a week and it's become painfully obvious very quickly. Not yeah, I know. Not I know personally, what it is, but, but I, not... I know exactly what it is, yeah. Um, well, since I don't go looking for it, not very common, but I do know it happens all the time. Like I have personally not seen it. Yeah. It's extremely common. Extremely. It's rare to meet people who haven't. And if you tell them that you have never, instead of freaking um, VR chat, they normally are just like, oh, that's... That's weird that you haven't done that yet. Or they're like, oh, I can change that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
I've heard I've heard it a good bit. I think it's pretty common. I don't think yeah, it yeah. happens in public world, but I do think it happens. I've had friends that have tried it out purely out of curiosity. And some people like, it was a wicked experience, like wicked cool experience. And others were like, it, it, it was just so weird. Um, like wearing the, the headset and stuff. From the little bit that I've experienced, I have noticed the phantom touch thing. I can say, I can see where people get off to this shit. It's just, it's cool. Like, uh, I mean, I'm I'm 24. I mean, this is this is a long way from uh, texting on my flip phone to uh, to uh, talk to some girls back at my age, you know. So I mean, the evolution's nice. Maybe they feel good doing it. I don't know. Maybe that's the only positive, but I think that's, it's that's really true. weird. I'll go with that. I agree with that. I mean, if they literally can't do it in real life, then they might as well get it somewhere. So I guess it serves some purpose. It was, you know, it was an experience. I'll just say that. I mean, the contact and just, you know, hanging out with somebody, the, you know, light physical contact is probably the way to go. We're, we're in the age of like the cat girls and anime waifus. And I mean, like, you, you, you know how it is. Like that's, it's, it's just preferred brother. It's just, it's the age right now. Um, so there is a, a huge sum of people here that are people who have either been hurt through whatever or people who don't feel like they're accepted and they come in here and they drink with other people and think that they are going to feel somewhat of an acceptance right i don't know how to really explain all that um well i think it's like even if you don't feel accepted it's more so like you can be whatever whoever you want the thing that would make me consider doing it is also the thing that would make me consider not doing it. If it was a hot girl, I would be like, why would I do this in some pixel world? At least just show me something on a camera. At, at the very least, I'd rather just go to that route than do it that Why would we do it that way? You know, it just... I think the only way I would do it is in a very ironic way. Like, I don't think it would be serious at all. Yeah, I mean, maybe unless I met my soulmate. A lot of the hookup culture in this game is between people who establish these bonds between each other and get to know each other and like each other other and it is very real you you never know what some people because like some people they're just overly horny in a sense right some people are lonely and they get attached to each other and they go off and do whatever and they talk and have a good time and do whatever there's a lot of one night stands and think about it there's no stds there's no condoms y'all have your fucking bluetooth sex toys yeah so basically um if you have long distance partners or like a long like, so I'm polyamorous, so I say I have multiple partners, meaning two. Both of my partners are long distance from me. You know, we can't, it, we're not always readily physically available for each other. So what we'll do is we'll use Eleven's toy and we do have the app synced to our phones so that our partners can control each other's toys, you know? And it's basically like masturbating for like, it's basically masturbating with a usual toy, except your partner can control the vibrations, the patterns of the vibrations, etc. It's long distance sensual play but you can have like multiple uh people controlling you can have one person controlling multiple toys at a time um yeah it, it's pretty cool um we we call those orgies uh <laughs> i ended up buying a nora on black friday because of peer pressure like everyone else in the drinking lobby did so i was like yeah why not let's try it out yes people can have nsfw um avatars uh very explicit ones and uh they, they with the body tracking it, it can be very easy to um perform erp i mean like more so. i don't know what you can see but like most avatars like all this clothing can be toggled on and off it can be completely naked or completely clothed like okay. within the unity program there is a software that has been created by an independent creator i'm pretty sure and it's called dynamic penetration it's fairly new it's not very common yet <laughs> It makes it more realistic, like in the sense, like like we're used to colliders and dynamic bones, where you can see things move fluidly, like they do in reality. Where dynamic penetration, it's more like a somewhat PG-13 example would be like there's a magnet in his mouth, and then there's like a magnet in my hand, and once 
like they get in a certain proximity of each other, it looks like my hand would be going in his mouth. So there's a feature that has been developed in VR chat where it connects and I can bend it with my hand and do that. And it has that with the like the mouth. Um, sometimes it has it between the boobs. And there's mods. I have a mod that um, I can't. It's actually paired with um, VR chat, but it lets me touch other people's colliders. And so on my screen, and if they have the mod also, they can see me touching their colliders. And so if two people have those, then they can obviously, you know, touch each other's colliders and such. And it's more of a immersed situation. I don't know, like for me, visually, I would prefer to see my actual partner rather than some like, uh, I, I don't know, some avatar that isn't my partner, you know, it has my partner's voice, but it's not my partner, you know, that, that's just me. And like I said, I don't judge people that can do it in VR chat. I mean, kudos to them. Like that, that's not something I could do, but I respect that they can do it, you know, no shame whatsoever. Props to them. I think it's kind of the ease of access. You don't have to go outside. You don't have to spend much money. You don't have to go and do everything. It's just you can go and meet people and then you can go interact with them as quickly as possible. At, like in the comfort of your own desk chair or bed or whatever. Like the anonymity and not having to actually see another human being and then uh, deal with the consequences if things go bad, you know, things like that. It's, it's much easier to deal with than real life. You know, there's everybody that claims that they have anxiety or this or that. And I'm not saying they don't, you know, but I think some people are a little too low on the confidence scale to be able to do stuff like that. So, and it is just way easier to do it here. It literally takes no effort. And as long as you have about like 10% of a personality, you won't really get turned away. You know, like that's all it takes. It's just a little bit of personality here. In the real life, it takes looking good. You know, it takes, you know, making right moves, you know, uh, you can be a little sloppy in VR. In reality, you know, there's kind of that pressure to, like he said, you know, be accepted where, you know, we touched on here. You can be, you know, whoever, whatever you want. Not That's not to say that everyone's necessarily pretending to be something that they're not. Yeah, it's actually. just that it kind of alleviates that pressure. And especially, you know, if you weren't connected to the Internet, that kind of limits your opportunity opportunities of the connections you can make with people whereas you know once you're on the internet it's the entire world you're connected to i don't know i feel like if you go down that hole it's just gonna get worse and worse and worse like you're just gonna stray further from reality i subjectively don't care what you do on here but objectively it's probably worse for humanity to have people having digital sex on their, like he said, just going further from reality. I would say that I don't think these people are like really deviants in any way, unless they do it in a public setting in front of people. I think these people are just normal people doing normal people things, being horn dogs. <laughs> unless, as long as they're not hurting anyone, who gives a shit? Let people be what they want to be. I don't know if it's so much that it appeals more. I think that it's their only option, maybe. And they can make themselves look however they want. I feel like just launching this game is escapism already. We all, I think we're, everybody on here, like we're escaping, but we're doing it in a <laughs> in some way we find less pathetic, I guess. But then, I don't know, it's probably just as bad. At the end of the day, life's about just as long as you're happy, right? So if it's what makes them happy, hey. I'm so, I hate to say it, it's the most addicting thing ever. Because, I mean, it's fun. It's fun to conversate with people. I've always been a talker. And, you know, when you knock out, um, you know, looks and stuff like that, it's really easy to look past who someone may be in the real world as opposed to who they are here like role play in a sense like you get to be who you want to be and i think that's really cool it's easier to like somebody when you know they're not but ugly i definitely prefer reality this is just kind of like a tolerable substitute i mean like virtual reality is more of like a torture it's more of like the you're expecting what's gonna happen to be fucking soon don't have to you know be a dick to anyone just be nice. It's free. It's easy. Just don't be a dick. I guess just don't be lazy. Research. Don't half-ass it. Go balls deep. And just have fun, you know? But have fun safely. Despite the stigma and some of the taboos surrounding this subject, I legitimately found it really, really fascinating talking to all of these individuals in VRChat.
Hearing a diversity of opinions and perspectives from dozens of different people on the same subject was just really interesting to experience, and it really deepened my knowledge on the subject and opened my eyes and my mind to a completely different world from my own. Obviously, not everyone is going to be into this kind of thing, and that's okay. Different strokes for different folks, and everyone has their own reasons and life experiences that lead to someone engaging or opting out in certain behaviors. The way I see it, I don't have any problem with it. I won't judge anyone for what they do in their personal lives, and as long as it is between consenting adults and no one's getting seriously hurt, more power to you. I was truly blown away by all the incredible people I spoke to about this, and I have to make sure I give them all massive appreciation for taking the time to speak to me, enlighten me, and help the world understand more about this subject. If you know or recognize any of the people in this video, please do not grief them over this, don't harass them, dox them, or otherwise do anything with malicious intent, and be sure to give them their privacy. If you see them around in VR chat, please be kind and respectful to them, and treat them as you would want to be treated yourself. If you are one of the people in this video and wind up having a change of heart, or just want your segments removed for any reason, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I would be more than happy to edit your parts out or censor anything you want changed. I hope everyone watching this video learned something because I certainly did. If you haven't already, make sure to give this video a like, hit the subscribe button, and slam that notification bell so you don't miss any more of my future videos. Plus, it's just a really, really easy free way to help support the channel. Make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below and let me know what you thought about this video or tell everyone about your experience in VR chat. Make sure you share the video too. I don't have any huge organizations or agencies helping my channel grow. So the best and easiest thing you can do, which is also free, is just to tell people that this video exists. Thanks so much for watching, ladies and gents. I love each and every one of you beautiful father muckers. Grimsy out. To meanwhile, where the girl is just like, oh my god, oh, it's rotating, is doing all this, <laughs> you know, like.